Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Time has finally come for our final part of the powder room makeover. So if you have missed part one and two, please go watch both of those now so you are all caught up to catch this final part in this series. This room is coming together so well, even better than I probably could have imagined it in my mind. And I am so excited to kind of finish up all those final details that I need to do and then reveal to you the final product. But let's just get into it. Caulking is fully done. And I just started painting a little bit just to kind of see if this paint, I'm using a latex, latex paint, if that would be the right choice for this or not. And honestly, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to continue. definitely gonna have to do a second coat on here too because it's a bit streaky but it looks really good you like it PJ you like it baby oh hey baby hey. oh look at you look at you you are so precious yes you are you're so precious so I really haven't updated you guys very much since doing or really while doing this or since doing this I it was just a bit much to like film and like keep track of having to like move everything back and forth but this is what it looks like in this room right now so I am so happy with this because like the difference that this has made from when it was just like a plain wall is just crazy I think I'm still gonna do back here I'm on the toilet. I think I'm still gonna do back here, but if if I included the clip, you might have heard that I bought seven of these pieces of trim. And when I started putting them up, I realized that one of the pieces I had bought was slightly different than the rest of them. It wasn't until I like cut it into the right size piece and then started to like, try to line it up with the corner here and realized that it wasn't lining up and it wasn't because I cut it wrong, it was because it was the wrong type of piece. Luckily, I only bought one like that because they were right next to each other at the store. It was in the wrong pile or I grabbed the wrong pile, I don't know. But either way, I only have one left of this type. So I don't know if that's gonna be, and eh, it's definitely not gonna be enough for all of this, but it might be enough at least to start this one because it's really one, two long pieces, one up this way, and then the bottom piece can just be like the scraps that I have. So it's been a few more days now and I'm gonna go ahead and paint a second coat on here. But first of all, look what I got, eep, eep, eep. I'm engaged. Look how pretty it looks in here. <sighs> looks so good. Here's what it's looking like with the second coat now that it's drying. And one last little look. Tee. Here's what they're looking like now that that second coat has dried. So it looks really pretty. So it's finally time to finish up those last, as much as I can, those last pieces of trim for the powder room. So. It is nice and warm out here, 31 degrees outside and nice and sunny in here. So it's honestly, I'm kind of warm. I'll try to film more of it today. So I just measured the first piece. I'm gonna cut it, miter the corners, and then I'll just continue on this process.
finish this one now. Unfortunately, I don't have enough to do this one yet. I think I could probably run to Home Depot today and get the rest for that. So I just painted the... I somehow ended up filming the rest of this in slow motion. So yeah, I ended up off camera cutting and nailing everything in place and then filling the holes, caulking it and painting it. And that's where we are currently. Next, I'm gonna go in with a second coat of paint on here. And that's gonna be the last thing that I need to do for the molding trim. Overall, I feel like this bathroom is really coming together. We still have a few more things that we need to finish. Um, including painting the second coat on these trim pieces, switch out this faucet. And then obviously we still have the issue of trimming out these jagged edges, patching in all of the areas that we need to patch, styling the shelves, do a little something here with this styling. This, which I ordered on Etsy a knob to put here. They actually sent me the wrong one, so unfortunately I have to wait a little bit longer for that. It's time for me to paint the second and last coat. Look how much paint I have left. It's like literally just that much. <laughs> Well, I attempted to change the faucet by myself. And so when I was turning this piece right here, this whole thing just turned and I didn't realize it. And so it started dripping a little bit and I just went back to retighten it all together and kind of just say, F it, I'm gonna call a plumber to just do this. I don't wanna deal with it. When all of a sudden I was tightening it and this just fully, this pipe just fully removed itself from the lines. And so I've been cleaning up water. The water was completely shooting out. So I ran downstairs very frantically to turn off the actual water for this bathroom down in the basement. Water was dripping through the floorboards. There's like a puddle in the basement now and called a plumber really quickly. They said they can be here in the next 15 minutes to the next three hours. So as of right now, I'm just getting it cleaned up since it's soaking wet. Puddles of water all the way down there. And then um, this mat was wet, just using this last towel. They're gonna come fix the pipe and change out this faucet. I was like, you know what? The second it started going wrong, I was like, I don't want a repeat of what happened with the wallpaper. The second we realized it wasn't gonna work out in a DIY sense, we should have just hired somebody. And honestly, I'm glad that they're coming today because now I can get it done. Oh, they're calling me. Ah! Yay! Plumbers ended up getting here in 30 minutes from when I made the call. So, yay it's done they did an awesome job they like fixed the pipe below that caused the leak they turned the water lines all back on for me i didn't even have to go back down to the basement and they hooked this whole thing up it looks awesome i love it Woo. yeah the only thing he said is i'm gonna have to like use some goo gone or something to get the silicone removed since we decided to leave the um base plate off and just use this little detail and i think that was the right choice look how simple and like sleek it looks Ugh, and the gold looks so pretty i think it just really oh wow i just think it looks really cute that looks amazing i love it okay so i have the trim that i'm going to be using to put on along the perimeter of the wallpaper to cover up all those jagged edges and seams, or not seams, just edges. 
So I'm not really sure what color I'm gonna paint this yet. I'm kind of thinking a creamier white. I have a white that we used in our laundry room and the bathroom upstairs. I don't think it's gonna match perfectly, but I'm gonna grab the wallpaper and put it up against the paint in the laundry room and see how it looks. Otherwise, I might paint it blue. I don't know yet. So here's what the wallpaper looks like with this paint color. It's honestly really, really, really close. Like the paint is maybe a little bit brighter, like more yellowy, but okay. So here's it with the lights off. So it's making the paint a little more its actual color rather than the warm color of the light. Honestly, I think it's gonna work. You can definitely tell that this color is more like creamy and warm where this is like very stark white. So I got my trim pieces here. I know I'm gonna have to do some patching because I needed to cut it to be the right size of it in my car. So I'm gonna sort of just cheat and make a longer piece, but I'm gonna do it on like the left side where the wallpaper is already messed up um, and where that pipe goes across. So that way you don't have to see the part where I patched it in. Well, that just snapped right off. It's been sort of like bent in certain spots for a while. So every time I pull it out, it gets jammed or stuck. And then now this one just totally, I went to go retract it back in and this piece just totally snapped off. So now I can't even access, like, I can't even get the measuring tape out of here. And if I could, it wouldn't be very easy to measure accurately. Luckily, I already made my very last mark, so I don't need to measure anything anymore today. But I'm gonna have to get a new tape measure now, so yay. Got my cuts done. Really only had enough material for exactly what I needed. So I didn't wanna mess it up, which I didn't. And then here's the extra piece. See how the ends are not mitered, they're just straight cut across. And then this piece is just going to be patched in right here. Something like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and just paint all of these with the color that I have. So I'm probably going to have to do one, maybe two coats. This isn't the greatest paint, just from the hardware store, my local hardware store. I don't even know what brand it is, honestly. Easy care. I've always needed two, co two coats with this paint. This is what the shelves look like right now. I've kept to the things that I want to keep in the bathroom. Um, for the most part, I'm gonna see what it looks like once I style the rest of it with what I have currently. So I'm 100% set on this design right here. And I have a picture that I just got um, from Linen and Clove. Check out the haul. And it's gonna go right here. Look how pretty this is. This I'm gonna be putting sort of like right there. Yeah, I think that looks really pretty. So I'm gonna keep that right there for now. We'll kind of adjust everything as we go. And then I got my little ring dish that I just wanted as like a functional ring holder so I can put my ring in here every time I'm washing my hands. I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna put this yet, so I'm just gonna, honestly, it might be part of a candle situation. This, I'm gonna have to cut everything off of this, but this stuff is gonna be going over here as well. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna style it yet. These are just some vintage books that I have. This larger one I got like several years ago, like probably five plus years ago. And it's like this French dictionary. And then this one is actually, um, a Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. I actually got this in one of those little libraries in my hometown. When I was walking by, it caught my eye and I'm like, I'm gonna take that. So I'm gonna kind of see if these work. And then for now, I might just use this candle. Maybe too much. It's like a little crowded, but I think I could also do it more like that. Or maybe like more like that. I'm gonna mess with it a little bit and check back in with you. Okay, so here is what it looks currently. I tried a few different options for this. Let me know what you think down below. And so I'm set on this top shelf for sure. I feel like that's good. Maybe just space these a little bit differently, but I think this is good for sure. And I'd say here it just looks a little low. Like there's not enough height on this side, but 
I think for now we'll leave it and kind of see where it goes from there. It is the next day and I kept everything on this shelf the same, but I ended up changing the styling here. I'm still unsure what I want to do with it. So it's not done. I just took the candle situation off and I actually ended up moving that here. I also ended up moving the ring dish over here so that when I'm washing my hands, it's super easy just to throw it in here. Anywho, let me go ahead and show you what the shelf looks like currently. So this is perfect to me. I like this exactly as it is. I think this is pretty decent. I'm not sure about having the book here. It really depends on what else I put. Um, I, I'm really still unsure. I think I might get some more advice from some other friends who have a really good design eye and just maybe do some thrifting and see what I can find. No rush at all. Okay, so I'm gonna start patching in the areas of the wallpaper where we kind of had some mishaps happen. So basically I'm just gonna eyeball where I could tell that the pattern was stopping. So I see that on the very bottom, this piece is like the very bottom part. So it almost cuts off like right here. And then the pattern below that, so like this part is where I need to actually take that and paste that onto the wall. But, oh, I wish I had a shovel. Just, just gonna use scissors. I wonder if I go like this. Actually, trial and error. That's all DIY is. As far as a straight, unjagged line goes. It's probably slightly better than what we have on the perimeter of the walls. This is not a scientifically proven process or anything, but I'm just gonna go for it. So this, let's see, like that, yeah. In Can I just cut it with this? No. It's not perfect. I might need to overlap it just a smidge or take a little bit off of the top, but honestly, that looks good. That's how it's gonna be. Okay, so I'm gonna start hanging the trim. This is gonna go right over here. Okay, can you just stay there for a second, please? Guys? No, no, no. Okay. It's better than having jagged wallpaper. It's not bad, but just add something that I didn't necessarily want. And to be honest, like currently I kind of hate it. And I have to remember like that's gonna be cleaned up. All these holes are gonna be cleaned up. I'm gonna caulk all along the edge. I was thinking about it last night as I was falling asleep and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna paint this blue. I just feel like it's gonna hide it the most because right now it just still sticks out too much. Blue it is, if it looks bad, I can always paint it back white. I, it's just kind of inconvenient that I didn't do it before I put it up, but I didn't know it would've looked like this. Hi, girl. I think I'm gonna start the wallpaper patching. Basically just, tried to line it up as best as possible, and then um, took my straight edge pieces and just sort of shoved that into the wall as close as possible and then folded it over just to make a crease where I will be cutting it. So I got all my supplies here. I got the straight edges, my brush, so the paste, and my piece of wallpaper. Using my little table. On the graves, in the cracks of a thousand leaves. Spread it. Somewhere in between. Our past and our future rolling over. 
All the dividing things Are you still listening? Want to be heard by you Slow fall into the Indian Now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish nailing in this piece that's gonna go right there. So give this some time to dry, fill in all the nail holes and caulk the other sides, like these sides. Okay, so this is where we are now. This is like my new um, favorite filming thing, I guess, <laughs> looking in the mirror. Um, so basically I've caulked everything. Honestly, I hate caulking. Even with that little tool that I bought, um, I still just feel like I never can do it very well. And I honestly was originally, when I was planning to keep this all white, I was just going to tape like the wall to keep it really clean. But like, I just, since I'm painting it blue, I'm like, I could be sloppy, er. But just give me your caulking tips. Like if you're somebody who like just caulks really well, <laughs> Like, I don't know. So got my paint brushes, got the last tiny little bit of paint left, the blue paint, and I'm gonna go ahead, paint the trim that I put up against the wallpaper. Oh my God, am I even gonna have enough? There's like none in there. Oh my gosh, fudge. Okay, I think it'll be okay. Cause it's like, look how much I already did. I mean, not much actually. So this is how much I've done so far. It just, I think it's gonna be amazing because just think about how much better it's blending in than how it does with the white. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish the first coat at least and then check in with you. So there's what we're looking at right now. So honestly, I like it a lot more. I still don't like, I still would have preferred it without any of this trim, but to be honest, it's way, way better than when it was just all white. So it's the next day and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the second coat on the wallpaper trim. This is how much paint we're working with. You can tell I've been scraping the bottom. There's how much paint's left now. So this is the knob that I ended up getting for the vanity. It's like a marble with like this brass surround. And the issue with this is that it's bumping into this when it closes. So you can see the screw or the, yeah, the screw sort of sticks out and as it closes, it hits that. I'm gonna have to close both these up. This one's just too low, I think. And this one again is too high. So the next option is just to lower it just a smidge. I think it's literally hitting like right here. So it only has to be lowered about this much. And so I'm gonna fill these holes and then I'm gonna check back in with you when I'm ready to actually drill the new one and install this in its proper place. I went down to the basement for the first time in probably like a week or so and we've been having like some plumbing issues, like sinks draining and like toilets flushing properly and all of that, which we've never had before. So I was just kind of planning on calling a plumber anyway, but then when I went down to the basement, there was like water on the floor, the utility sink is fully f filled with water and like a piece of the pipe like popped off, I guess, somehow. <laughs> but somebody's coming within like the next three hours or something. So we'll see what that's about. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole for the hardware. I already marked out where I'm gonna drill. So let's just get into that. Hello. So it's been a while. I was gone in Florida for a week. So I'm back now. 
haven't done anything. Well, I came back two days ago, haven't done anything related to the bathroom yet, but there are just a few things that I have to do still. So I'm gonna try to finish those up so I can just be done with this all together. <laughs> Not that I'm like sick of it or anything, but you know, just cause there's like those last few remaining things on the to-do list. Um, but so just a quick update on the plumbing situation. So that was all going down a couple days before I left. We ended up needing to have three plumbers come out to tell to help us before anyone could even figure out what was actually wrong. So there were just so many roadblocks <laughs> that they experienced. So the third person came out and was able to tell us who we needed to call and what needed to be done. So it's not something they can fix, but we are having like a, someone else come out who can actually dig out this area of the pipe. So basically the whole situation has turned out to be like an HDTV moment. <laughs> so basically there's this thing called a house trap that we have that's completely blocked. <laughs> so that's why the, the water had been building up in there. So it very, very, very slowly drains. And so eventually there was too much pressure in the pipe and it just bursted and our entire utility sink was covered with filled with water because that's where it was backing up to. And so basically we've been able to use water, but just very sparingly. So I was kind of glad that I was gone for an entire week. They're hopefully going to be fixing this this week, I hope. So we're going to get that taken care of. The plumbing has been an issue, but it's okay. I'm glad we got it figured out. It was really frustrating when people just kept coming and saying, we don't know. It's definitely not this, but beyond that, we don't know. They're gonna be taking out that whole house trap. I don't even know what it is. They're getting rid of that and they're replacing it with an outside something, something. Yeah, but anyway, now that I'm back, I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding the holes that I filled. Just with the whole plumbing situation, all of that got away from me. I was hoping to finish all this before I left, but I didn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand these and maybe I'll have enough time at this particular moment to paint, touch up the paint with that spot. And then the very last thing we need to do is still patch that spot with the wallpaper, which I've been avoiding like crazy. So we'll, we'll get there. That's right, there's no more avoiding it. Time to patch this wallpaper. I looked up two videos on how to do it, so hopefully that will be enough. I'm gonna start with finding this area of the pattern in my roll of wallpaper, um, cutting out a piece slightly larger than what needs to be patched, and then using my new sharp knife to cut through that two layers of wallpaper and then paste it in place. And that's the last thing. <laughs> so you wanna put enough pressure that it cuts through both layers of wallpaper, but you don't wanna cut the drywall. I wish I had this knife when I did it in the first place. This knife is great. I hope I'm doing it right. Like, I hope I'm not making it worse. How could I though? Okay, let's see how that worked. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Okay, wait, no, let's attach. Cause I don't think it's just gonna peel right off. Well. All right, I ended up getting it off. As you can see, I tried painting that little spot that was open with white paint, hoping that it would be a match to the color of the wallpaper, which it wasn't. <laughs> so it was still really obvious. So that's where you can see where it's still gray. That's where I cut this old wallpaper and had to remove it. The rest of this never had wallpaper to begin with, obviously. So here's my little patch. I'm still gonna have to trim like a piece here I'm just not sure I might do that afterwards but honestly that works 
that's gonna work. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I watched a video on how to do it. This knife is really good, by the way. If we would have had this in the first place, I think our wallpaper would have been like really, really good. So I will definitely link this below. For reference, this was the knife I originally used. Deli brand, I guess. So it's the same concept, but you can tell even though they're both snap off blades. This, I think just the fact that it's like flatter, like it comes down flat instead of just comes straight out like this. I think that had a big difference to being able to hold down the paper for some reason. So yeah, definitely would get a blade like this if I could do it over again. I think I've decided to trim it first. <laughs> which I'm still second guessing. Also, I lost my knife, there it is. I think I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. Let me show you how nicely this knife cuts. Even just like on the floor. <laughs> like I'm hardly putting any pressure on there. And it just cuts like, oh my gosh. I'm telling you guys, if I would have used that in the first place, it would have given us a straight line. It would have eliminated like most of our frustration. But anyway, you live and you learn. If you're ever doing wallpaper, please get this knife or any other knife that has good reviews. Please, please, please. It's the moment that we've all been waiting for. Probably not. Um, but I mean, I've been waiting for it. So we've got my wallpaper pasted, got all my tools and I've trimmed it a smidge. So I'm still probably gonna have to trim it a little more, but that's fine. Just gonna place it in place. Okay, so I'm just gonna start lining it up first. Get it all aligned, oopsies. Get it all lined up. So nervous. Honestly, like right here till about here, it blends in perfectly. I don't know what happened uh, down here. If this piece is just a smidge larger than the cutout I made on this piece, that could be it. Like it's kind of overlaying and it's kind of making that seem a bit obvious, but I think that's pretty good though. Look at that. See what I mean? Like about here, it blends in super well. And then down here, you can kind of see it a little bit more. And then same up here. I think there's just a lot. This is where it ripped and we tried to fix it in the first place. I just didn't want to have to worry about doing all of this. That's why I didn't want to do more than I had to. So this is what it looks up like close up. I'm going to show you like maybe coming into the bathroom, what it would look like and just from different views. Oh my God. Like, I think that looks great. Let me show you. So again, like, can you see it? Especially cause there's a lot of like lines on this wallpaper anyway. That is better than I could have imagined. And I was putting it off for a long time obviously. I'm really glad I watched those videos today because that was the only reason that I knew exactly how to do it and I knew that how you can get it perfectly cut out and everything so I'm really glad that I did that and I would have not known to do that. I would have done it a totally different way. <laughs> and to think I was terrified of it. <laughs> I was so scared. So finally after working on this bathroom for two and a half months it is time to show you the final result. I'm so excited. Before I show you the final results, let me remind you what this bathroom looked like before we did anything to it. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming. Miles 
in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird wing. Golden, I'll follow the golden. Golden, golden things. Gold hair, gold ring. So there you have it. That is the final reveal of our powder room. I am just seriously so happy with how beautiful it turned out. I cannot believe how much personality this tiny little space has now. And I had such fun making it over. So if you liked this video, please subscribe so you don't miss any of my thrifting videos, DIY projects, or other room makeovers like this one. If you like this video, give it a like and comment down below what your favorite part of the powder room is. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, thank you.